Praise the Lord, abundant life. Praise the Lord, abundant life. Who's happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, who's happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? I know we may be few in numbers, but we can still give God some praise tonight. Amen. Before we get started, can we just lift our hands? Can we just worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Can we just thank him for how good he is? I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. And he deserves our praise. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We exalt you. You alone are worthy. Come on, can we talk to him for a little bit before we get started? Father, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for getting us here safely, oh Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning. The roof over our heads, the clothes in our closets. Come on, we can thank him for the simple things in life. The shoes on our feet. Jesus, we love you, we love you, we love you. You are so great, oh God. You are so wonderful, oh Jesus. Come on, let's just take a moment. Come on, let's usher in his presence right now. That's it, that's it. Jesus, we love you. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you. We feel you in this place tonight, oh Father. Oh, we feel you in this house tonight, Jesus. Oh. Can I hear you? Great are you, Lord. We sing the chorus together. It's your breath. Worship him. Jesus. Come on, when we shout his praise tonight, we let him know he's worthy. i 
just like that again. great and powerful God and he can do anything come on every hand raised and every eye closed let's just wait on the Lord for a moment hallelujah Jesus we thank you Lord we magnify you Lord for who you are and what you're doing and what you've already done we worship you Jesus we worship you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we magnify you tonight Lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we put our hands together tonight and begin to thank him for what we feel in this congregation already. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, praise team. In this praise team, do a, do a great job, Brother Austin, Brother Ivan. Amen. Ushering us into the presence of the Lord tonight. And you may be seated. How many is excited to be at church on Wednesday night? 
I know a majority of all of our young people are at uh, North American Youth Congress. They're getting ready to start church here in about the next hour or so. And we're expecting God to do great things amongst our young people the next three nights in St. Louis. I'm excited to hear great reports when they come back. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. By way of announcements, uh, this Sunday, uh, Brother Lewis will be back with us. And we're excited for that. Amen. Amen. I believe just the last three weeks here at Abundant Life, we've seen 18 people baptized in the name of Jesus. I think about 10 to 15 received the gift of the Holy Ghost in the last three weeks. That's something to be excited about. And I believe it's going to continue this Sunday with Brother Lewis. And we also have church Monday night. Everybody say Monday night. And so there's no confusion. We do have church Monday night at 7 o'clock right here in the sanctuary with Brother Lewis. And then again Wednesday night right here 7 o'clock with Brother Lewis. So we got a few nights with Brother Lewis uh, preaching and teaching the Word of God to us. And I just believe miracles, signs, and wonders can happen this coming week. Amen. Amen. And also, uh, starting Friday night, for those that are uh, wanting to participate and be a part of the Asian congregation, is having their own little retreat slash camp meeting Friday night, uh, Saturday day, and uh, sun or Saturday night up at the Albion Campground, just about 30 minutes from here. Brother Lewis will actually be preaching both of those nights. Uh, church starts at 6 on Friday night and 6.30 on Saturday night for those that want to be a part. It is going to be a great, great time in uh, the power of God at the Albion Campground, amen, with our Asian congregation, amen. How about all of our kids and our Kids Life team come down, Brother Dallas and Sister Brittany, and their crew is going to be helping us tonight. At least we have the kids in full force tonight. They're not old enough to go to Youth Congress, so let's give it up for our kids tonight. Brother Dallas and Sister Brittany, amen, you guys are dismissed. Amen. Why don't we all stand tonight? I know I made you be, be seated just to give you a quick break. But tonight, concluding tonight's service, our ushers will be waiting for you at the doors as you uh, exit the building to take your Wednesday night tithe and offering. Tonight we do have a very special guest speaker. We do have uh, Pastor Brown's father, uh, Bishop Brown, with us tonight. It's good to have him and Sister Brown with us tonight. Amen. It's always a treat uh, to have them with us. And it's also, uh, he's been teaching our MIT uh, once a month, coming in, teaching that. And that has been outstanding uh, to hear him teach the Word of God to us on Sunday nights. Amen. Pastor Brown, uh, Elder Brown, we love you to come and take your liberty tonight. When we put our hands together one more time for the elder. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? And we're thankful for that. And uh, how I love Wednesday nights or Tuesday nights, different nights when they have it, but midweek services are a very, very special time. Every service is, obviously, but when we gather together to study the Word of God. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. And so as stable as the physical world seems to be, we've got our feet on the earth, yet it will pass away, but the word will not pass away. All right, turn to somebody, shake their hand and say, you look pretty good for the shape you're in. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It is a delight to be here with you precious people. I get to learn maybe one or two names each time we come. Of course, then I forget the ones I've already learned, but, uh, but we're working at it. But such a wonderful congregation, and we're thankful to be here. Uh, this week is very, very special for the United Pentecostal Church, the largest youth Christian youth youth gathering in all of North America is a United Pentecostal Church meeting. Isn't that amazing? Bigger than all the others. And that says something. People say, well, this is a terrible world and youth are just so anti-God, but uh, if we could transport you there, you would, you would be amazed. We were there last time, 35,000 
I remember going, my wife went to the first one in 1979. We were living, pastoring in Iowa. We were building a church. I couldn't leave. We're, I mean, physically building, Brother uh, Keller, you know, hauling bricks and all of that kind of stuff. But she took the young people down to Memphis and, and had a wonderful time. And the next time they had it, in 81, we took, uh, you know, vans and whatever and went down to Shreveport, Louisiana, and we thought we'd hit heaven. I mean, there was 3,000 people there. Now it's over 10 times that. And uh, good things are going to happen. Good things are going to happen. And so if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to the book of Deuteronomy or click on your little iPhone, I hope you have at least one or the other. Uh, and let's look at something here tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse uh, 21. I don't know if they'll post them up there. Yea, I say unto thee, there it is. All right. Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were, past tense, Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord, the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. A mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. Remember those plagues. And he brought us out from thence. Now, can you read the next part with me? That he might bring us in. Can you say it again? That he might bring us in. In, brought us out of something that he might bring us into something to give us the land which he swear unto our fathers. Now, go to the New Testament, Colossians, amen, the book of Colossians. And I want to read uh, just two verses here, chapter 1 and verse 12 and 13. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Don't ever forget where you came from. I don't care your name, your pedigree, your bank account. From the power of darkness we came and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. How many are glad that you've been translated? You've been brought into a new and a living way out of darkness and into light. Now, this morning I was reading and God really impressed something here on me in the book of Mark. So I'm going to take just a moment to look there. And I want you to look, first of all, at uh, the first chapter of Mark. Verse 17, Jesus, getting his disciples together, said, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Come ye after who? He said, Me! Me. And verse 18, and straightway they forsook their nets and what? Followed him. Everybody say, followed him. Followed. And then uh, James and, and uh, John, they came. And in verse 20, what happened? Straightway he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. Him. Who? Jesus, a person, a man. And then in chapter 2 of the same book, and uh, I want you to look at verse 14, as he called Levi, who was Matthew, the tax collector. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the receipt of custom and said unto him, follow me. Now, that's pretty simple theology. 
follow me. You don't have to know the books of the Bible. You don't have to read Greek. I like what my uncle used to say. You know, they would throw Greek at him. He said, you know what? I didn't get saved in Greek. I got saved in English. God's word and his salvation is beautiful. And he said, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Everybody say followed. God bless you. You may be seated. Now, Isaac Newton, of course, was a scientist sitting under a tree, supposedly, and the apple fell from the tree, and he wondered, why did it go down instead of up? And, of course, we get uh, Newton's law of gravity. And uh, he also, uh, I wouldn't say discovered, but yes, I guess that's it. Uh, he came to a knowledge of the first law of motion. There were three laws of motion, but this was the first law of motion, and I'm just going to kind of give you a little background of it, and it says this, an object at rest tends to stay at rest, and if you have a teenager on Saturday morning, you know that's true, all right? An object at rest tends to stay at rest, and an object in motion or moving tends to stay in motion with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force, an obstacle, friction, whatever. And uh, you see, that's why uh, I think it was Buzz Aldrin or one of them was coming back on one of those lunar trips from the moon and they're on their way back to Earth and of course reporting on what's going on and uh, they're in the spacecraft and radioed back and said, well, basically Isaac Newton's driving right now. There was no resistance. The direction was set. It was outer space. And there was nothing to stop the action of the spacecraft. And uh, so we understand a little bit about, about that uh, physics aspect of, of what's going on around us. Now, very simple. We could use the old... Uh, Sunday school picnic relay race where you had to each given a, a bowl of water and you had to pick it up and you had to carry this full bowl all the way to the end and then give it to the person that was the other end and then they would bring it back and there would be teams competing and whoever had the most water in their bowl won. But, you know, here comes Newton's law and it, it kind of has to be uh, remembered because uh, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So if you go to the bowl and it's there on some kind of a table and you pick it up, that water's saying, I'm at rest. And you woke me up and it splashes out. And so you pick the bowl up slowly and then you very carefully begin to move forward because now the water's saying, okay, I'm starting to get adjusted here. I was still. But then if you all of a sudden make a turn, the water says, no, I'm going that way. And it spills out because of the law, first law of motion. You find that when you go to McDonald's for your coffee. Or if you're really a connoisseur, you go to uh, Starbucks and you put it in your car. And maybe you don't put the lid on it for one reason or another. And you're going out of the parking lot real slow. And then all of a sudden you've got to get out there and you hit the gas. And the coffee goes into the back seat. What is that? The coffee was saying we were doing fine at zero miles an hour or one mile an hour. But suddenly that first law of motion. And so we, we understand that movement, movement is very, very important, very important. When you go on an airplane and get in that seat, uh, you know what? You're not being pushed back in your seat when you're, you know, going down the runway. It's because when you sat in that seat, you were going at zero miles an hour, and then it starts going, and all of a sudden, faster and faster. Now it's 100, 110, 120, whatever, and you feel like you're being pushed back. And so there's an inertia thing that's there. And, and I want to somehow help us to understand that in the natural, in the spiritual, there are comparisons, there are parallelisms. And uh, 
we look at the Bible, Eden, cast out of the garden, but with a promise. And of course, things happen. Flood came. And then ultimately, after the world had rejected any leadership of God, God chose a man, Abraham, and put promises upon him. And from him, a nation would arise that would be the model for a following after God. And so the Jews uh, began to walk with God. And the message of the Bible is deliverance. Everybody say deliverance. deliverance. Set free. Liberated. And that's the message of this book. Of all the things in the world that are going on and all of the books that have been written and are being written, nothing compares to the message of the Bible. Deliverance. Deliverance. Until ultimately, you know it well, we come to the New Testament and the ministry of Jesus. And his terms were simple. Follow me. In other words, keep moving. Follow me. As I move, you move. I'm always in motion. And you follow me. Never, ever stop. Follow me. Not a religion. Not a doctrine. Not a philosophy. Not an organization. I thank God for the United Pentecostal Church. But I'm not following the United Pentecostal Church or any other church. I'm following Jesus. How many of you are following Jesus? Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior. And so the message of the Bible is a message of deliverance. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We have come out of darkness and we're into light. Amen. He brought us out that he might bring us in. We're not in yet. We're on the journey. We're in motion. We're moving. We're following. But he promised us that with the power that he got uh, to deliver us, to bring us out as he did ancient Egypt, the same power will bring us in no matter what the opposition. And you all have experienced opposition in your walk with God. Not a one of us is not. Now, we're not truly delivered from something. And you know, there are people that have got great testimonies of deliverance whether it's freedom from addictions and uh, all kinds of things. And, and uh, you know, we, we hear testimonies of that, and, and we thank God for what he's done, whether they were outward or inward, all kinds of, of uh, bondages that people were in, and, and even uh, questioning the reality of a God and all of that. And he delivers us from that. He sets us free. But we're not really delivered from something until we're delivered to something. Think about that for a moment. You know, man can be in prison. He's done a crime. He's there and doing his time. However long it might be. It could be anywhere from a few months to 30, 40 years. And then the day comes when they are set free from the jail. That's a wonderful day, I can just imagine, after spending all those years in a cell. Very little interaction. But if he has no direction, if he has no direction, if he's not following something, then it many often, oftentimes is true they and back in. And I don't castigate somebody that's done jail time. Thank God for uh, salvation and powerful jail ministries taking place and people are coming to God and that's a beautiful thing. But unless you turn to something, you'll go back to the old ways. I don't know how many times I counsel people about financial problems, even in, you know, young families in the church. And uh, 
and trying to help them to get them squared away in their finances and, and uh, you know, uh, get on the right track. And then we work and we work. <laughs> I've often told this, I had one couple, I said, you got any credit cards? Yes. How many do you have? 22. Are you behind on any of them? Yes, all 22. Because they kept opening up new ones to pay for, for uh, you know, the minimum amount on the other ones. Oh, God help us. Okay, so we went to work, thought they'd lose their house and everything, and uh, it was a miracle. And uh, they did listen. And uh, it was a long process. But if, you, if somebody were to come along and say, I'm going to pay your debt, and everybody's saying, I'm looking for that person. No, probably not. But if somebody did, if you didn't change direction, how long before you'd be back in the mess again? Hello? He brought us out to bring us in. But we've got to, and this is the caveat, follow him. Follow him. We're not really free from darkness until we step into the light and walk in the light. And we're not really free to leave something behind until we find something better and we hold on to it. I look at you precious people. I don't know where you came from. I don't know where God found you. I don't know what your life was like. But thank God you embraced the message. You received God's love and his spirit. And you began a journey and a walk and a direction that led you into greater and greater things in the spirit of God. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. There's never will, there will never be a time when you've prayed enough, when you've been to enough church, uh, when you've studied enough scripture, when you've had enough experiences in God. We grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many are still growing? Come on. Hallelujah. So we're not free when we say, I will stop this, until we say, I will start this. We stop sinning and we start righteous living and a beautiful thing begins to happen. So the text that we read in Deuteronomy is the children of Israel. You know the story well. They were led by the pillar of a cloud and pillar of fire and after coming out of all of the day it experienced in the wilderness and, and the Red Sea and uh, every step was moving them toward God. And in actuality, God was leading them and guiding them. And so their, their deliverance was really twofold because, first of all, number one, they walked out of bondage, walked out of bondage. They were bound in their sins and trespasses, so many people. That's a good word for it. They couldn't shake the monkey off their back. They couldn't get rid of what was bothering them in their life. But they walked out of bondage and in stepped into the fulfillment of a promise. It's a beautiful thing to look at a congregation and know that such were some of you, which are washed, you're cleansed, you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Such were some of you. Darkness and a lifestyle that was so anti-God. But you see, God only delivers people to deliver them to something. And so when God moved on your life and you repented of your sins and you obeyed the gospel and you were baptized in Jesus' name, God filled you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That was not the end, as we all know. That was the beginning of a beautiful walking in truth and in the light as he is in the light. Amen. Forward motion. Forward motion. I like what Philippians Paul said, chapter 1 and verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus 
Christ. You know, I was just a young guy when God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and I'm thankful for that, 11 years of age, and I had a lot to learn. You know, when I was young, I thought, oh, I finally got the Holy Ghost. It was wonderful. And I thought for a while, well, that's the end. I'll just, you know, okay, put it on cruise control. You can't put your walk with God on cruise control. Why does the Bible say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? Why? Because it's a progressive thing. It's a motion thing. It's a I'm following him thing. And, and here we are. You know, I got to counting up one time. I, I, I wished I'd written it down. How many sermons of Bible studies have I heard in the last 70-something years? I mean, the third Sunday I was in church after I was born. I don't remember what they say I was. But you say, well, you've probably learned all you, you're going to learn. No, no. The enemy will try to challenge us try to come against us and try to trip us up no matter how young in God you are or seemingly mature. You see, God doesn't deliver you just to prove that you can, but, and I'm thankful for this. How many of you believe that God has a purpose for your life? Everybody hold up their thumb. Do you know what? You all have a thumbprint. Did you know that? Folks said, yeah, when, I had, when they, the police got a hold of me, yeah, they took that. <laughs> no. And, and here's what's amazing about a thumbprint. Everyone is different. You mean seven plus billion people in the world and everyone is different for your life. You know, we're so prone to say, oh, well, we'll leave it up to the ministers and we'll leave it up to the singers and they're the ones that, you know, and they got the talent and I've got nothing. You've got everything because you're you. And God's got a little space out there in this huge world population where only you fit in. Are you hearing me? He brought you out that he might bring you in. And the enemy might try to trick you and get you turned away from the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. But direction is very important. Would you not agree? If I got out on high Interstate 69 and said, I'm going to Indianapolis, and the next sign I see is Michigan border, direction becomes very important. It's going to take a while to get to Indianapolis if I keep going. Maybe if I go faster, then I'll end up in Grand Rapids or somewhere. That's not going to help. Direction. What direction is your life taking? My life. And the enemy would like to get us to alter our course and our direction. But everybody has a direction. Think about it. Every life here tonight is on a, a road, so to speak. Where is it leading? Are you listening to that voice? Are you following him? Not just church teachings, Sunday school, lessons, sermons, even Bible reading, as important as all of those things are, do we follow him? That's what Jesus said, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me. Not an ideology, not an institution, but a person of Jesus Christ our Lord. So in order for you to follow a person, you have to get personal with him. Amen. And that's a daily thing. That's a daily function in every one of our lives. Well, Paul was obviously, yeah, Saul it was, was obviously on the wrong course. He was headed up, going up to Damascus, going to capture me some of those 
so-called Christians, bring them back in chains or whatever, get rid of them in the bright light, and guess what? Direction changed. And when that happened, it was as if God now set in motion this Saul of Tarsus to become Paul, to become the apostle, to write much of the New Testament. But he set him in motion. There was a time, there was a day, there was a moment, there was a second when it happened. And he began a journey, set it in motion. So God gives deliverance with the design. He has purpose. He demonstrates his power with a purpose. He doesn't just do frivolous things. If God healed you, if God delivered you of something, if God set you free, there's a purpose. And he facilitates rescue with a reason. I look at people over the years and I watch people who begin a walk with God. Nothing's more thrilling with their little infant steps in the spirit, just like a little physical child, how we're all there, you know, ready to catch the little guy if he or she falls, but so excited about the first step. And I love the zeal of people as they begin to embrace a new life, and they're truly wanting to follow him. They're very idealistic. And then the world gets in the way, and life gets in the way, and it becomes a challenge to follow him, to lift up your head above all of the sound and noise and activity to focus on him. I don't have to do a Bible lesson, and neither does anybody else, on how close we probably are to the coming of the Lord. We feel it in our bones, don't we? We, we know something's about to happen. But I don't want to be held captive by having a blindness because of the busyness of life. God touched you. He put forward motion in you. He's got something that's beginning to happen. Now there's some friction along the way and there'll be some diversions and there'll be some hills that will slow them up. Sometimes it's hard to get things going. But then God begins to accelerate. You know, when we were a kid, we had uh, two of our favorite sports in Manitoba in the wintertime were number one, hockey, and number two, uh, pushing cars out of the ditches and snowbanks. Everybody, everybody had blocks in their trunk. We had bags of sand. We had chains. And back then they allowed it studded tires. You couldn't drive without snow tires. And we were, I don't know, we spent half a winter trying to push people out and rocking it back and forth and rocking it back and forth. And then finally we'd get it up. And then, of course, ice underneath all of that. And, and you'd get some motion. And then it'd start to roll. If God's touched you, he's done something miraculous. And you began a walk, and he's put forward motion in you. And so it led you to an altar, waters of baptism, and a prayer life, and a Bible reading life, and a sharing the gospel with somebody else life. Because no man having put his hand to the plow and look his back is fit for the kingdom of God. No, no, I've got one direction. I'm in motion. I'm following him. Amen. And isn't it beautiful to not only grow in grace, but listen to that voice of God as he says, now your thumbprint, there's nobody like you, nobody like you. Nobody influences the people that you do. Nobody knows the people that you do. And I'm going to direct your steps. Follow me. Me. Jesus. You know, we need to open up our spiritual ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. Because God's going to speak to you. Sometimes we're waiting for, I want the word from God from the prophet. I want somebody to tell me what to do. What's wrong with your ears? 
Hello? Because God speaks to us. And it won't be in Greek either. He'll make it very plain. Lot's wife had forward motion, fleeing from the city of destruction, twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. But she changed direction. When you spill something, you lose something, just like the water in the bowl. And I pray that we can somehow go in that forward direction. In this year of 2023, listen, when I was in Bible school, people were leaving Bible school because they said the Lord's coming, the Six-Day War in 67. we got to go start a church because we're only going to be here two years, and now we're here 50-something years later. But God's got something for every one of us. Amen. Set your affection on things above, not on the things on the earth. Amen. Going forward. <laughs> my grandparents, my, my grandfather, great-grandfather, they left 1905. I mean, there was war in Russia. And they, it was a precursor to the 1917 revolution. But if you read about the year 1905, that's when they left. And I don't know how they did it, but they traveled all across Europe, and they got to Germany, and then they got on a ship, and they went all the way across the ocean, and they came to the New World. And it was just covered with timber, and they had to chop down trees and build a butcher shop. And then from then on, you know, things began to happen. But it was always a forward thing in the natural Always a forward thing. Can't look back. They had one brother that went back because he went back to get his family and never made it back. Now, that's just a little illustration to let you know that in your spiritual walk with God, no matter what the opposition, no matter what the obstacles, no matter what the bumps, uh, follow him. Follow him. Follow him. Amen. And so here we are as a church. And I look at this great city of Fort Wayne, drove, have driven around it, great place. And I look at the souls, and you do too. And we realize there's a tremendous challenge. God didn't just put us here to, you know, eat the fat of the land and just to enjoy fellowship and good church. And, and all of that is wonderful. But God wants to speak to us. Somehow to say, keep on the right direction and keep moving forward. Now, there's times when you can move real fast, and then there's times when your life kind of takes it slow, and you wonder, am I going to be able to make the next step? I don't know where you are in your journey, but wherever it is, God's got something powerful and dynamic for every one of us. A repenting church, somebody said, is a praying church. And a praying church becomes a praising church. And a praising church becomes a revival church. And a revival church becomes a soul winning church. And a soul winning church becomes an exciting church and an exciting church uh-huh becomes a growing church because it's all about souls see christianity is a lot like riding bicycle you can only course go so long and then you're either going to start pedaling or you're going to i had a hard time learning how to drive a two-wheel bicycle with my dad behind me. I ran into trees and all kinds of things. But finally, I got the hang of it. But I found out you got to pedal. I'd get a little panicked on there, and I'd forget to pedal. And my little four-year-old body fell over, mortally wounded, but back on my feet in two seconds. But we've got to pedal. I'm not talking about earning your salvation, but I'm following him. What's God saying to you tonight? What's God saying to you? 
You know, there are people in this building right now that are going through tough places. Some of you are enjoying good times, but there are some people maybe sitting next to you, in front or behind you, you don't know what they're going through. And I don't know what they're going through. You know, and I, and I excuse the French, <laughs> but some people may be going through a hell on earth experience. But let me say something. If you're going through that kind of a place, I suggest, sir, ma'am, that is not the place to stop. Keep going. Keep pedaling. Keep calling on God. Keep listening for his voice. He'll bring, he said, I brought you out to bring you in. And I've, as a pastor, have seen people go through some tough places. It's not an easy thing to pick up a couple at the hospital after you spent days with them and their little six-month-old baby had a surgery and it wasn't successful on a heart. And they were in the back seat carrying the dead baby back to Jackson, Tennessee because the funeral home said, you can go ahead and bring the child there. And my wife drove their car back. What do you say to people like that? That was their only child. But you know what? You keep going. And later, God blessed that family in many different ways. But if ever there was a time when I was without words, that was one of them. But I am saying, I didn't bring you out to dump you in the desert and let you bleach your bones and die there. I brought Israel out to bring you in, and I brought you out of darkness and into light. I brought you out of the world, and I brought you into the kingdom of God, and I'm going to bless you and keep my hand upon you, and someday the trump of God is going to sound, and we're all going to rise to meet the Lord in the air. There's going to be a great and a wonderful day. Don't forget the message. The law a forward motion. I began a journey, and I'm not going to give up. I want us to stand together tonight. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us out of that kingdom of darkness. It's just me, but I just feel even though it's quote-unquote Bible study night, I think we've got two extra minutes because somebody here tonight, maybe you, maybe another one, we don't know, they just need that encouragement. And I'm just going to ask this church, we don't even need music, but I want you to step forward here right now and just line around this altar and maybe somebody is going through something and you may not know about it. They may be standing next to you, but I think we're going to pray together before we leave this place. Is that all right? Amen. Why don't you come right now? Amen. Forward motion. I'm going forward. I'm a follower of Jesus. Amen. Pastor may not even know what you're going through. He may not have any idea. But God knows. He loves you. You know that? He has got an individual print for you. A plan for your life. You believe that? Why don't you lift your hands and thank God for it right now? Come on. Come on. He told Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God will bring you through. I said, God will bring you through. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He loves you. Amen. Amen. God's going to have the last say. I said, God's going to have the last say. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. How he loves us. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just tell the Lord Jesus, I'm following you, Lord. I'm going forward. Amen. Amen. You're leading. I'm following. Oh, glory to the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> oh, he's going to bring you through that tough place. Going to bring you through that tough place. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. Thank God, thank God. That's it, that's it. Amen, that's it. Just lift your hand to the Lord right now. Praise be the name of Jesus. Praise be the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. That's it. Amen. Maybe your brother or sister's fighting a battle, but we're coming together. We're going forward. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. That's it. Just turn it over to the Lord. Turn it over to God. <laughs> Say, I'm following you, Lord. I'm following you, Lord. I'm following you, Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Reach to one near you right now. Just place a hand upon someone if it's appropriate. Thank God. We're going to face the rest of this week and everything is going to be all right. I'm a follower of you, Jesus. I'm a follower of you, Lord. I'm a follower of you, Lord. Oh, God, I will not turn to the right or to the left. I will have my sense of direction. 